Hey, it's Mike here, and today, sunscreen and vegans, really just because vegans are a type of alternative movement. A lot of them wanna do things naturally, and because of that, I've seen quite a bit of anti-sunscreen sentiment among vegans. I could spend hours amassing a montage of various vegan YouTubers saying anti-sunscreen things, but thankfully, I have my friend Fruity Bro 2 d 5 here to explain all of the common <laughs> beliefs. Hey Mike, yeah, it's just that I need the sun's natural rays to bake my skin to a nice vegan leather in an advanced fashion. And also, just, I mean, sunscreen causes cancer, man. So we're going to be looking at a bunch of research and try and address some myths and just concerns in general, like does sunscreen block vitamin D production? Does sunscreen cause cancer? Does the sun not cause cancer? And various myths around sunscreen and try and hit it in a reasonable amount of time. So let's go. I do have to say this is absolutely not limited to vegans. People in general are pretty bad at using sunscreen. I've been pretty bad at using sunscreen throughout my life until getting more educated on the topic, but it is pretty bad depending on the study and the time and the place. We're seeing about less than 20% of men using sunscreen at all, and it's closer to 30 to 40% of women using it, depending on whether you're talking about the face or the whole body. And yet, according to the CDC, skin cancer is the most common type of cancer in the US. And Lindy just shouted an elaboration from the other room, in the world as well. So this is pretty key. And I will say, thankfully, people's awareness of the importance of sunscreen has been going up according to a survey from the American Academy of Dermatology, but they found that like 30% of people are still getting burnt, which is really bad, and that there were a bunch of other misconceptions. And I wanna address one of the biggest principles that I think is responsible for people getting way too much sun for their skin type, and that just has to do with colonization from more northern latitude climates to more southern latitude climates that appear to have the same climate, yet have way more UV radiation. And this is largely really just white people from Europe who think that that their skin level of melanation can handle the amount of UV that they might be getting in the US. But I mean, I'm in Iowa where it gets super duper cold in the winter here, and we're at the same latitude as the Mediterranean. And for an extreme example, Philadelphia is further south than Madrid, Spain. And for my final example, I'm not stopping yet, LA is at the same latitude as Tunisia. And if you're wondering how this sort of climate disparity happens, well, it's because of the ocean currents bringing, for example, warm water up to the west coast of Europe and then cold water to the east coast of the US. And of course, other currents on other coasts. And yes, due to the microclimate of the region, you can have less UV at the same latitude, like if one's a desert and one's not, but the difference isn't insane. And finally, European people like in the UK can still, of course, get sunburn and have advanced photo aging from too much exposure in their native climate. So we can't just appeal to nature here and say that sun exposure is ideal anyway. Before I'm done rambling, obviously people with darker skin have more UV resistance from their melanation. And in the US, for example, black people have about 1 20th, 1 25th the rate of melanoma. And of course, people of all skin tones can benefit from sunscreen in terms of UV protection and preventing photo aging, which we'll get into more in a little bit. But yes, UV is really the main culprit here from the Cleveland Clinic, quote, ultraviolet radiation from the sun is the number one cause of skin cancer. And while there are a lot of factors like people put on sunscreen when they plan on being outside for way too long, they might not put enough. We are still generally seeing that using sunscreen lowers various skin cancer risks. For example, in childhood, use of sunscreen is associated with 40% less melanoma, as this study found. And in terms of the mechanism, sunscreen has also been shown to lower DNA damage from UV radiation, so preventing DNA from being ruined and then replicating badly. And I have to say, there are of course some benefits of sunlight. I think it's also important to not be afraid of being in the sun to the point where you're like, don't go outside, that is also not healthy. But in terms of some of the fears that I think really need to be talked about here, the main one is the idea that sunscreen itself is going to give you cancer. And furthermore, that any risk there is way higher than the risk of getting cancer from the sun. However, we already know that UV is the main contributor to skin cancer, so. And just in case you're like, do people actually believe that sunscreen could cause cancer? Well, here is Dr. Box, great name, from the UC Cancer Center in Colorado and the president of the Colorado Melanoma Foundation. He says, a major bugbear for me was that people feel their sunscreen is going to harm them or damage them in some way. And I have people say to me, sunscreen, I never wear it. It will give me cancer, pure certainty. 
There have been a lot of articles about potentially cancer causing compounds in sunscreen, which has scared a lot of people off. They get way more headlines than skin cancer from the sun gets probably. But it is worth mentioning that the FDA does regulate sunscreen like a drug as opposed to the supplement industry, which is horribly unregulated. That being said, I totally understand the concern that our government is not doing enough to regulate toxins in the general supply of food and everything else. A lot of my channel is about that. But I would bet that even for the people who are afraid of getting cancer from sunscreen, any of their concerns about any ingredient can be dodged by a certain sunscreen out there. And that brings me to the easiest answer here, which is chemical versus mineral sunscreens. The chemical ones are really smooth on your skin. They can be absorbed, but then the mineral ones sit on the surface and they are known to not cause cancer through the skin for sure. And in terms of mineral sunscreens, you might be thinking, oh my God, those are the ones that leave the ugly white smears or the cast. That is very 2004. And thankfully we have tints now of all skin colors. And just to give you an example, here is some, I'm not even gonna mention the brand, but it is a vegan one. And look at that. I mean, it's not leaving any type of white smears or anything like that. And now let's get onto the chemical sunscreens. There is absolutely no proof that the active ingredients that are FDA approved in chemical sunscreens, the UV filters, cause cancer. I need to get that right out of the way. And I think we should take a really level-headed look at this because it, there's a bit of a gray area and there are concerns that people have which mainly go back to a study that took chemical sunscreen, had people do four times a day, three quarters of the body surface for four days in a row. And they found that yes, some of these chemical UV blockers were showing up in the blood. And then that was later corroborated by the FDA, as they mentioned here. But as they emphasize, absorption does not equal risk. And the FDA advises continued use of sunscreens. So the answer here is simply that more research is needed on these chemical sunscreen UV filters. As of now, we don't know whether they do or do not cause cancer for sure. However, final reminder, UV is the main cause of the number one cancer in the world, which is skin cancer. And now we're gonna take a quick break with this video sponsor, Seed, but we're gonna make things more interesting today. We're actually gonna take one of their symbiotics, which of course are probiotics and prebiotics mixed together, and we're gonna crack it open. We're actually gonna look at it under a microscope because I got this out of storage, and so let's look at some cool bacteria. Okay, so of course we've got the coating that helps to survive the acid of your digestion that I've mentioned before. So we have this outer layer, which is the prebiotics, I believe, and then we have the inner layer, which is the probiotics. I'm gonna mix them all together just so we can get an idea of what's in there. So this is pretty cool. We've got essentially our larger chunks of prebiotic to help feed the bacteria, and then we've just got all of this bacteria that I've diluted here. You can see those tiny little specks. We can see some of them are a little bit longer chains. Some of them are not. Seed contains 53.6 billion active cell units from 24 different strains. Of course, some of them are gonna look similar to the other ones, but they're gonna do different things. And Lindy and I have both been taking these, and I always mention Lindy because it has helped her so much. She's like super into it. But if you wanna try this, of course you can use the code Mike15 at checkout for 15% off your first month's supply. All right. Anyway, there was another little bit of an annoying drama that happened, just makes me frustrated with the general supply chain in the US, and that is, you might've heard about the benzene contamination in sun products, not to be confused with benzone, like oxybenzone, which is one of those filters, completely different thing. Those UV filters are FDA approved. Benzene is a carcinogen and contaminant that was found by an independent lab called Valisure a year ago. And yeah, it was in 78 different products. However, this seems to be more of a problem of just the modern industrial supply chain. It's likely in a lot of products here and there, like hand sanitizer was recalled. And then it's also worth mentioning some other counterpoints from the University of Nebraska. They say it's important to note that it's really just one study which hasn't been repeated. And strangely, they also detected benzene in blank test tubes without sunscreen. And finally, toxicologists note that even if you applied the worst sunscreen on the Valisher list to your entire body, you'd be exposed to less than half the amount of benzene you breathe in normal city air in a day. That's kind of post-apocalyptic. Either way, this is something we absolutely can avoid because there are now lists of benzene-free products and I will link those below. And fortunately, a lot of ones that have come out that are not benzene-containing won't be on there. Oh well. And I think an interesting aspect to look at is what about like overall death 
for using versus not using a sunscreen, maybe through something so dangerous in sunscreens, we would see an increase in death. Well, we have this study, which is unfortunately not huge, but gives us at least a little bit of a signal. Well, the results weren't statistically significantly different for the sunscreen group's mortality, which is good. They weren't dying enough more to have that. They actually trended at about 6% lower total mortality. You know, that's just a good piece of news. All right, now let's get on to the fear that vitamin D will not be created if you're wearing sunscreen when you're out in the sun. And I have definitely had this concern in the past and there's a little bit of nuance here, but the data is pretty promising. This review says that sunscreen use for daily and recreational photo protection does not compromise vitamin D synthesis, even when applied under optimal conditions but it's funded by L'Oreal, which of course is a company that makes sunscreen. However, they did cite some other reviews that were not funded by industry, like this one, which says, although sunscreens can significantly reduce the production of vitamin D under very strict controlled conditions, their normal usage does not generally result in vitamin D insufficiency. There could be a few reasons for this. One, because People just aren't perfect at applying sunscreen anyway. So while you are gonna get protection in some high risk areas, you might be getting some exposure in other areas that would then create enough vitamin D. But I think a final explanation that makes a lot of sense as well has to do with UVA versus UVB rays. The vast majority of UV that you get is going to be UVA. That's probably gonna do the most damage, but it doesn't actually help you create vitamin D. That's UVB, which does also damage the skin, but is in lesser amounts and triggers vitamin D production. And the kicker is that while now we're getting more full spectrum sunscreens that block both, a lot of sunscreens just block UVA, so they're not gonna be blocking the vitamin D type of UV as well. And at this point, you're probably realizing that in order to have that vitamin D created, you have to allow some damage to occur to your skin. And so it becomes an equation of how much risk you wanna have. You know, how much of a benefit are you actually going to get from getting sun sourced vitamin D as opposed to just taking some supplements or eating fortified foods? And dermatologist Dr. Dre, I believe her name is Andrea, a YouTuber who happens to be vegan actually, says this on the topic. You're also going to get a mega dose of UVA, the rays that penetrate to the stem cell population in your skin, generating DNA mutations that ultimately lead to skin cancer. They suppress your immune system, impairing tumor surveillance. They also destroy your collagen, weaken skin barrier function, make your skin more vulnerable to environmental stressors, age the skin. Uh, and contribute to hyperpigmentation. Uh, so there is a lot of damage from those UVA rays that accompany the smaller fraction of UVB that can actually do the vitamin D synthesis thing. So again, I don't think we should be deathly afraid of the sun, but it seems like, especially for people who are relying on getting vitamin D through supplements or not sun sources through the winter, might as well just be safe and keep taking it all year and then not risking advanced photo aging and DNA damage. And that topic of photo aging brings me to why I really do want to advocate for vegans to be wearing sunscreen, especially on their face. And of course, everybody should be wearing it in their high risk areas. Men is the upper back and neck, and then women is the legs, absolutely. But in terms of vegan activism, you should want to be looking younger on your diet. You shouldn't be wanting to be advanced photo aged by the sun just because it's quote natural. And yes, from this study, sunscreen has been shown to reduce photo aging from this other randomized control trial. People who wore facial sunscreen had no detectable photo aging on their face at four and a half years, which is of course less photo aging than the control group. And this whole thing is why I feel like there are some compelling anti-vegan videos out there, which are like, look at all these vegans deteriorating. Well, what you're actually showing is a European person with very small amounts of melanin moving to a equatorial region of the world for 20 years and not wearing sunscreen and getting advanced photo aging. 
They then of course wanna blame it on some lack of animal products, some magical animal compound that is going to prevent photo aging in that scenario, no. And finally, I do wanna give credit where credit's due though, because there are antioxidants like carotenoids that block UV damage to a certain extent. I would just never rely solely on those. And that brings me to a list of other very important things about sunscreen, the first of which was just don't fully rely on sunscreen. You should also be thinking about shade and things like tight-knit clothing that doesn't let UV through. It's also important to reapply every two hours that you're in the sun, and then of course reapply if you go in the water and come back out, because you're washing it off. You also have to remember, probably heard this before, that cloudy days can still cause a lot of UV damage, so you have to still wear it on cloudy days. And finally, you probably need to put it on way thicker than you think. I know we're all trying to save money with it, but we're talking two milligrams per centimeter squared, which is just, you know, you gotta slather it on pretty well. And finally, you're probably wondering, well, where can I get some vegan sunscreens? Well, thankfully, there are a lot of lists out there on the internet of vegan sunscreens. I will link them below. And as my friend Sarah reminded me, also be sure to get ones that are reef safe if you're gonna be swimming around the ocean because of course certain ingredients can damage coral reefs. In the end, I think it's really important that people should wear sunscreen, vegan or not, but specifically, of course, I had to make this about vegans because I've seen it being part of the culture in various aspects. No, but I want vegans to look good as they age so people are more encouraged to not eat animal products. So sunscreen is an activism tool. That's what I'm trying to say. I also think that the US government needs to do a better job. They need to put emphasis into either proving or disproving that these chemical UV filters are carcinogenic and that way we can just get past it and people can feel completely comfortable using them. Anyway, I think everybody should go out and try and find a sunscreen that checks all of their boxes because I'm sure it exists and then they will be better protected from the sun. And also finally, of course, you can click the link below and use the code Mike15 at checkout for 15% off your first month's order of seed and get your gut going. Feel free to like, because obviously it helps the video out a lot and subscribe and all that good stuff. And thank you for watching. Mike the Vegan has actually tied me up and said that I can't eat this amazing banana until I say that sunscreen is good and you should use it.